this. Let me get my little spatula. Let me get it off of there. Oh. What did we do? What did we do? Is it going to come off there? Okay, so another little trick um, when you're dealing with um, things like this is putting your um, mat actually um, flat side down. Okay, putting it flat side down and then peeling things off uh, that way. Okay, so I oftentimes find that to be a lot easier and a lot less stressful on my material. Um, if it's... Uh, You'll, you'll have to, you know, it's through trial and error. But as you can see here, I'm left with a whole bunch of stuff on my mat. And they're all little letters. And what am I supposed to do with all these little letters? Put them on individually on something, right? And so, um, that can happen, okay? This can happen, this happens. And what that is, is that certain cuts and certain things are not for certain materials, okay? So this this particular, um, we only learn through trial and error sometimes, okay? So maybe this could be salvaged for something, you know, your your card stock, uh, excuse me, like when you're doing your, um, your cards, if you're making um, like your photo albums and things. But this is going to happen, and the reason being is, is because this material wasn't meant for this type of file okay it just wasn't meant for it even though it was really nice looking and and I wanted to put it on a card it what that wasn't the file type for what we needed okay and so now we have to get get the stuff off of our mat and we're gonna have to scrape it off not a big deal okay just use your little tool to get it off if you don't again this does not come in your um, this does not come with the machine um, but you can in fact um, uh, get this uh, you can find a little tool like this um, in the cooking section sometimes um, they have little uh, small cheese uh, for soft cheese uh, they have these little knives for them and they're actually really similar um, if you do the Harbor Freight there's a brand called Harbor Freight they have, um, they actually have a tool set, so I'm just scraping these little things off, okay? They have, but they have a tool set. Harbor Freight has a tool set that, um, is about four dollars, and it comes with, like, half, half the tools, uh, not half the tools, uh, it comes with all the tools that you need, that you'll need, and it's, like, half the price as like one tool for one of the crickets, right? So those, these little tools are really expensive. Um, these little cricket tools are really expensive, but like I said, if you get the, um, I believe it's Harbor Freight is the brand. Um, they have these little, um, they're like little construction, little handy tools. Um, you get a whole set of them, okay? So you see how we just cleaned off our mat, okay? It, it wasn't that big of a deal. We just had to get all that stuff off and into the garbage that material was not for what we wanted to do okay so then this happens and it's okay what do we do we go back to the drawing board and we do something else okay so um, card stock and materials like that work really well for the draw feature okay we'll do that but first what did I do with my card stock I know I had it I don't know what I did with my little card stock I had it though I had a little blue piece of card stock that I was going to use for something, but that's okay. Um, so we got to go back to the drawing board, okay? When that happens, we just got to go back to the drawing board, okay? And the drawing board is our canvas, okay? So let's go ahead and press finish on this because we're done with that. And this thing didn't work very well for me, okay? It didn't work very well, but maybe I can cut it out on something else. So I'll, I'll come back to that project a little bit later, okay? Because that, that just wasn't the jam for me. Okay, um, we can always just write our own text in Cricut in Design Space, okay? I call this Design Space. I don't like to call it Cricut because Cricut is a machine. Design Space is where we're designing things, okay? Um, you can um, design things from other programs and you can upload them into, uh, into Cricut. And I'll show you how, how I um, uh, 
on how I would do that, okay? So you can go on to Google or Facebook, okay? You can go on to Google or Facebook. Let's go on to Google. You can find uh, free shared images. Okay, so um, I want a flower. I want to put a flower on a, um, on a shirt. I want to put that, that same sunflower on a shirt that I cut out in that, in the, you know, the project we cut out with the card stock. Okay, this one right here. I want to be able to cut that and I want to, I want to put it maybe on a, on a mask or on a shirt. And so I'm going to look up a sunflower clip art. I'm going to look up sunflower clip art. And they're, they're all coming in colors and those are really nice. Um, but that's not something that we can cut with our Cricut machine. Our Cricut machine can't cut um, pictures like that um, unless we are using our print and cut feature, okay? And we're not there yet. And so I'm looking for um, a black and white. So when you're just using the, the if you want to use like your, your some vinyl and, and put it on a shirt or a mask or something, you want to use the heat transfer vinyl, the HTV, we need to look up a, a, like something like this, okay? So this is free. It says it's a free sunflower. That's nice. Let's see? So we can do something like that, okay? So let's take this one. And on my computer, um, I right click and I save image as. Okay, so save the image as, as you normally would. Um, and I'm gonna name it Sunflower. Okay, so I'm saving this. All right, let's go into Cricut now. I've already saved it. Now I'm gonna go back over to my design space. Let's go into our Cricut design space. Let's go to upload. Okay, so there's a button down here on the side here on my on my on the PC. There's a button on the side over here. Um, all of these uh, will come in handy. Okay. So this is how we can um, search images that are on Cricut. So maybe we could have typed that in there. Let's see. On the left side, there was a little image thing. It said pictures. Look, we could have found one right there. Okay. There's the one that we cut out. Yes. It says it's free. I've selected it. I know it's selected because it says it's green. And I can insert the image. Wow. So I found it and I can, I can find images that way. But if I wanted to find an image like on Google or Facebook, like we just saved, we're going to do something um, pretty similar. We're going to go ahead and get the upload button. Okay. So there's an upload. So all I'm doing is, is utilizing all of my tabs here on the side. Okay. So it's templates, projects, images, text, shapes, and upload. So I'm going to go ahead and press upload, browse, And there's my sunflower. So there's my sunflower. I chose a sunflower that actually came with a, with a background uh, removed on it. But usually they would not be removed, okay? Um, so let me show you what it would look like if we had one that was... Uh, uh, normally when you find something on, on Cricut or you find something on Facebook, um, it it has a white background on it, okay? So it would look something like this, right? So we would have this white background. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this sunflower. So I'm backing up, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and upload that sunflower that we just made, because I wanna show you how you would clean up an image that does not have a, have a, have a um, background so as you can see here this one does have a white background okay so the background is not removed for us on this one and I want to show you how we would go ahead and clean up what we call clean up an image okay so again over here you have your your zoom in and zoom out your undo buttons are over here that's a feature that you usually have on on uh, most most programs okay over here we have our tools we have a wand that's our magical little Harry Potter wand okay we have an eraser tool, we have a cropping tool, okay? And so we can crop our, our image out here, we can use our, our eraser to erase things, okay? So here's the eraser, if I wanted to erase, and it's making everything into this purple and white. Everything that's turning purple and white would be uh, what, we, uh, what is being removed, 
okay? So if we were to preview it, that's not what we want, okay? Um, we want to be able to cut this out. We want it to look, we only want the black lines, okay? So we are going to remove all of it with our Harry Potter wand, clicking on the white areas on this particular image that we're doing, we just want this outline, right? We just want to cut the outline. And when we look at the preview, that's what it should look like, okay? That's what our flower should look like. That's what I wanna cut out, okay? So I'm gonna press continue. And now it's asking me, if I scroll down, I have to pull my page down a little bit for me to be able to see it. It's asking me, do I want to save this as a print and cut or do I want to save this as a cut image? I want to send this as a cut image because I want it to be able to cut out my vinyl to look, to, to cut it so I can have a sunflower like this, right? So I'm not going to save this as the print and cut. I'm going to save it as this one. And I know I'm saving it as a cut because it's green and highlighted on this side, okay? So I'm going to save it as a cut image and I'm going to go ahead and press save, okay? So go ahead and press save. And now it is uploaded into my images. Now I can select it, pressing, uh, I know it's selected because it's green, okay? And now I'm going to go down here and click insert image. Now I have this sunflower, okay? And that's how we would clean up an image that we find uh, on Facebook or on Google that is a free sharing image, that's how we would go ahead and download it, okay? Or get it into our Cricut design space, okay? And so if we moved too fast, what we did was is we found, we found an image that we liked, right? We found an image that we liked. Any of these will work. Find a free image. Oh, that one's nice. Looks happy, right? So we could we save it how we normally save it. For me, that's right click and I would save image as. And then once we save that image, we go over to our Cricut Design Space and then we upload that image that we just saved, okay? So it's a two-step process. We have to save the image to our device and then we need to upload it from our device into our Cricut Design Space. But as we can see, it's easy because we just upload, press upload image, browse your files and then here's where you can choose where where to put it so maybe I wanted to to insert this in right so that's how you um, take designs from uh, from somewhere else and you can put them inside of your design space okay um, and then we saw how we can get designs out of there we can click on our images and we can find um, things we can find a uh, birthday let's look up birthday images so here's some birthday images and things that we could use, okay? And so that's how we can get them directly from, um, from Cricut or from the design space, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna delete this one because I want my, I wanna put this on a mask. I wanna put this on a mask and I want it to, to look just like my sunflower, but I wanted to show you guys how to upload an image from Google or Facebook. Let's go ahead and delete that. I press the red delete button. Um, I could have also, I'm going to press the undo button so you can see this again. I could have also selected this from my layer panel, make sure that it was selected, and I could have pressed the delete trash button. Okay, so there's multiple ways of doing that. Again, I'm going to see the size of this one. It tells me here, okay, also tells me here on the top that this is 3.6 inches by about, that's a good size for a mask actually. I think I'm going to leave that put, okay. If it looks small on the screen, it's only because I'm, I've zoomed out to 50%. Now I'm zoomed into 100. And again, I haven't changed the size of my flower. It's still at 3.6 and uh, 3.5. So when I go to make this, I'm taken to my preview screen. Remember that preview screen that we saw before? Okay. And so it shows how much space it's gonna take up. I wish my mat was a different color than my material so it'd be much easier for my eyes to see because even I have a hard time seeing what is on the mat. But it shows me here how much room it's gonna take and it's gonna take up the same amount of um, space that I decide that I determined this, the space to be, um, but it does have a little wiggle room where it um, wants you to put your material 
which I'm gonna actually use um, heat transfer vinyl. So this is a little scrap piece of vinyl that I had. I always keep my scraps and this is why, okay? So I'm gonna make a, a mask with that scrap. So I would go ahead and press continue, um, but wait, we're dealing with heat transfer vinyl. And so what do we need to do when we're dealing with heat transfer vinyl? We always want to mirror, okay? We always have to mirror when we're dealing with heat transfer vinyl. Anytime we're dealing with heat transfer vinyl, we always want to mirror. We always want to mirror. And the way that we do that is in here in our print preview. We're going to press and click mirror. Okay. Now our mirror is on. We know it because it's green highlighted. Okay. When we press continue, it will tell us here that we have the mirror on. We can change it. Um, we can change it if we press edit and scroll down. You can also change the mirror option here if you forgot to do it in the print preview, okay? So always print, make sure that your mirror is on with dealing with heat transfer vinyl. My base material is set to cardstock. I am not dealing with cardstock, I am using vinyl. And so I wanna make sure to change my uh, settings on my, um, on my machine, okay? So the knob here, there's a knob and I'm gonna switch it so I'm looking here, and it can go all the way from paper, vinyl, iron-on, light cardstock, cardstock, bonded fabric, and, and poster board. So I know here that these are my lighter settings, and these are my darker ones, kind of how a toaster, toaster would be, right? Lighter pressure versus harder. So my thicker materials are going to need more pressure, and my softer materials not so much. So I'm going to adjust this because I have iron-on and I have a vinyl setting. I'm actually gonna switch this to my iron-on setting because this is iron-on vinyl, okay? This is heat transfer, iron-on vinyl, okay? It's the same thing. The heat transfer is referring to the ironing. It's the iron-on part, okay? So I'm going to put this on my mat. I'm gonna put my vinyl on my mat and it's not a perfect square. This is why I try to cut my uh, my vinyl in squares, and so it's uh, they it lines up really nice with my um, with my mat. Now, what side do I put down? I get this all the time, Coco. What side do I put down on my mat? And people say I'm I'm supposed to put the shiny side down. When I look at this, to me, both sides look shiny. This side looks shinier but they both look shiny and so that's really confusing for me to go off of. What I always remember is, is the backing, okay? So heat transfer vinyl comes with a backing and you can tell because if you were to peel the corner, very similar to how a sticker um, comes off. Just one moment, let me get my little nails working here. Thank you. Come off. So I'm just gonna peel this back for you to see. Now, if you um, if you're having a hard time knowing which side is which, you'll you'll figure it out um, after time. You'll start to get a sense uh, of just by the feel and the look of it of what it is. But if you can see here, I was able to peel peel that back from the backing. Okay. So here's the vinyl, and this is a protective sheet. That protective sheet is what keeps our vinyl together and helps it uh, uh, when we are uh, pressing it onto our material, okay? And so that clear backing side is the side that will always go down on the mat, okay? So that backing side down, that is for any vinyl. Backing side always goes down on the vinyl, always. When we're dealing with permanent vinyl, the backing side will always go down. That way you don't have to remember shiny side down for this and, and, and matte side for that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Backing side always goes down for vinyl, always. Doesn't matter if you're dealing with heat transfer or permanent vinyl, okay? So now that we have that lined up on our mat, I'm gonna go ahead and load it, okay? So it even tells me on my system, on my computer here, it tells me that make sure the mirror is on and iron-on material is facing up, is face shiny side down. Again, that doesn't make sense to me, so I'm going to recommend that you remember that you find out which side is your backing and put it down, okay? If you were dealing with um, all of this 
these are all my scraps. Just ran I know they're random, but they, they come in handy. Um, when I'm dealing with, um, you see, all of this, all of these have backings on them, okay? But again, to me, they all look shiny, okay? And so the shinier side is usually the backing, unless you're dealing with a holographic. So find out what side your backing is on. So this is good. It's set. It's lo It's ready to load, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I've made sure that uh, my ro my mat is against my rollers. I can make I'm making sure that there's space in the back for my mat to be able to maneuver. And now I'm going to go ahead and press the cricket button because it's ready. While that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and open up my weeding tool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Again, it has little perforations in the back that I'm just going to use to my advantage and pop it out like a toothbrush. Okay, so come on, little tool. If you're having a hard time um, getting it out, Use the other tool to get it out. That's what I'm, I did. It was hard for me for some reason to do that. Don't mess with your um, machine or anything while it's going. If, if uh, something's wrong, um, uh, it's not, um, you know, the material's getting jammed or something, do not stop it from this side. Stop it from your computer, okay? So if for some reason material starts shifting, because it does sometimes, and it starts getting jammed in there, cancel. Press cancel immediately down here. It's grayed out, but it's, it's still an option. Um, and I know it's an option because when my cursor looks like this, like a little arrow, that means nothing. When it's the little Mickey Mouse hand, or that little finger that looks like that, and it's pointing, that means it's a selection. So if, if something's wrong on your machine, do not attempt to take the mat out, do not attempt to uh, change the dial or change the setting while it is going, do not attempt to press the power button. Press cancel from your machine, it'll say, do you wanna cancel and press yes, and it'll stop the machine for what it's doing and it'll unload your mat, okay? So if for some reason you need to stop the machine, that's what you would do, okay? I gotta clean up my mess because I'm making a mess here and I haven't been cleaning as I'm going. Hold on. So the mat is ready, or the, the cut is ready to be unloaded, okay? So the machine is telling me it's at 100% to unload my mat and the machine is blinking at me, okay? So the little load and unload machine button, let's press it, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off I'm going to put my, um, again, I always keep my, um, keep this on when I'm not using it. Line up my little holes and put it down. Put the mat away. And then we have our vinyl, okay? So there's our little flower that was cut out in our vinyl. And now we're going to use our, our weeding tool. And we're gonna, um, where did I put the, oh here it is, I was like, where did I put it? Can't go far. We're gonna use our weeding tool and we're gonna get it out. Now, there's always a question of what do I weed? What do I take out, okay? Let's use our picture for a reference, okay? So we should always be using our uh, picture for reference to know what we're doing. So let's go ahead and press finish on this because we're done. Let's look at this. We could also use, because we've already cut this out. Now this normally wouldn't be the, the, the case, but we've already cut ours out. So we could use this as an example. Um, but what we're usually gonna be doing is, is we're gonna be looking at it from our computer, okay? So as we're looking at it from our computer, and we can make this bigger, let's zoom in so we can make it big. There we go, okay? So then we can do that. Now, I know a lot of people like to use lights 
and things of that nature, but I oftentimes will just use my computer and do the brightness, okay? And so I'm cheap. I don't waste a lot of vinyl. I'm actually gonna keep these little scraps. It's an inch, probably, probably five inches. So I'm gonna keep it. I'm frugal. I made it through college through my whole double bachelor's and master's and I never paid for a book. When I say I'm frugal, I'm not paying for it. So there we go, okay? So there's the little scraps. I'm gonna put that in my little scrap bin, Ziploc bag. And now I have my flour. Okay, and again, to know what to, to weed, what I do is, is I always have a really bright light above me. Um, you can use a ring light, you can use um, a light, uh, like a headlight works really well. And what I'm trying to do, okay, so let me move the light so it's not like all in your face. What I'm trying to do is, is do you see where it breaks? So oftentimes I'll kind of roll the vinyl. I'll actually roll it. And do you see where it came up right there? I start to peel back on the corner. My goal is, is to peel around it, okay? So I'm just trying to, I'm looking here. And what I did was, is I just, I peeled vinyl up. And I'm just... I'm doing the border right now, so I'm peeling the vinyl around there. So I got that, put that in the garbage. Okay, so I got the border out, and now I'm not really sure what to do, and so what I do is, is I zoom this in till it's the same size as my thing. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so now I can see what it looks like. Um, I, when we're weeding, we're weeding backwards. So I always flip it up so the backing side, the clear part is, is, uh, is facing me and the vinyl is in the back. So then I can see what the design is looking like, okay? So it looks like I need to get those petals taken out. So all the white space that's on my screen, that's what I need to take out on my on my vinyl and it's all black so I need to take that out so I'm gonna start with the first petal and you literally just like I'm just kind of poking it I'm just gonna peel it back so there's my petal okay you can't really do it like but this is how I how I how I would do it okay so that's looking like how it's supposed to do it or how it's supposed to go I'm just gonna keep on going and weed out my uh, my petals. This is a really um, a, this is an easier project for us to start with, and so that's nice. Okay. It may take a little while to understand what to weed and what not to weed. There's still times where I take something out that that's not supposed to be um, gone. Okay, and when we say weed it out. We're talking, it's just like a garden, okay? If we had, this is our garden, right? And these are the things that we don't want. We're just taking out the stuff that we, uh, the vinyl that's not necessary. Like I took off the, the border, okay? So I'm just, it's already cut, okay? Everything is cut for me. And you can see here, okay? You can see what needs to be removed. Look at this one, and then look at that one. See, you can tell. You can tell that that's the part that needs to be removed, okay? And I'll try to do it up close so you guys can see. Okay. So I'm just going to poke it. It didn't come off of my little tool, but that's okay. There you go. That's how I did it, okay? It's kind of hard to do it backwards like that, but 
I hope you can. I hope you were able to see a little uh, more up close of of what to do now. How to actually get the vinyl off? I I just kind of uh, jag it and then I stack my vinyl up. I don't take it off on each time like some people do. I just keep on going until it's so full that I can't go no more. That like no more vinyl will fit on it. Okay, and then there we just we weeded it out. It's done. And I mean, now all we got to do is just iron it on, use our heat press or our easy press and put it on our, uh, on our mask. That's all we got to do now. It's amazing. That's so cool. Okay. So, um, most folks have an iron, but don't have a, a heat press. So I'm not going to show you how to do this on my heat press. I'll show you how to do it on an iron. So I'll show you how we'll put that on, a, how we can put that on a mask. Okay. Just plugged in over here. Hmm, we got too many things plugged in. Okay. So we'll we'll do our mask after we finish cutting everything out. I'll show you guys how we're gonna finish our mask. Okay. So we have our vinyl. We cut out um, heat transfer vinyl. We also cut that on a cardstock. Okay. Same design. Okay. We try to cut out the uh, the thing hard stock that didn't work so well because it cut it all out now if we had tried this design on our heat transfer vinyl it would have worked perfectly okay so not all designs that work well on heat transfer vinyl are going to work on card stock okay um, and vice versa some things were meant for for different types of material okay and so just be mindful of that that um, what it looks like on the screen may not be um, uh, how it cuts out, okay? So how it looks on the screen may not actually be how it cuts out on our actual material, okay? So just be mindful of that, okay? So let's put that to the side because we're going to iron that on. Let's put our tool away because I don't need that right now. And I'll show you how to do... Uh, print and cut okay so using this same flower right here turn the volume uh, the brightness down a little bit that for me it helped to have the brightness um, behind it for me to be able to see okay that we were um, weeding out or taking out the vinyl that we didn't need so I'm gonna do a print and cut on this I want to print this out and I want to cut it okay now how do I do a print and cut on this image? You can't like, you can't save it. Um, so you can't save uh, things that you make in Design Space onto your computer. Uh, you can't save it directly on there. You can um, use a snipping tool. You can use the screenshot, and you can save things like that. But again, it changes it back to. Um, it'll change it back to. Uh, to a PNG or a JPEG, okay? So make sure um, that, uh, remember when we uploaded it, it was asking us in our upload, did we wanna save things as a print and cut or a cut? And that is why, okay? So let's do a print and cut on something, okay? So say we, we found that, remember that yellow image, the yellow uh, sunflower that we found, and I said, well, we can't do that with the vinyl, okay? And the reason being is, is because how would the system know what to cut out, you know? So if we were to upload this image, let's, let's save this. Let's save one that doesn't have a, um, oh, that's nice. Let's save that. Okay. So save image as, and I'm going to put, um, sunflower two, cause I already have a sunflower saved. So I'm gonna save that as Sunflower 2, okay? So it's saved to my computer. Now I need to go back to Design Space and I need to upload it, okay? And the way that we do that is as if, um, I'm already on my Canvas, but if you weren't, um, if you were just signing in or you wanted to, say you wanted to save this, you can save this um, as, save, you know, you can uh, uh, put it however you want. Um, or name it whatever you want. 
if you want a new project, there's a, a plus sign over here that says new. It's asking me, do I want to save the changes? I'll save the changes on this. And then I'm going to move over to my new project. Okay, so clicking on this new uh, arrow right here will always give you a fresh, clean canvas for, um, for a new one. Kind of like when you open a new Word document and it's a blank canvas, okay? So I'm going to go to my upload. It says upload over here. I'm going to go to my upload and I'm going to go to upload image. I'm going to browse. And there's my sunflower that I just downloaded. So I'm going to in, uh, select that. And then I'm being asked, do I want to click, do I want to select the simple, the moderately complex, or complex? Okay. Um, because I am just cutting out the border of this one, I would choose the complex. If I was cutting things out, and you will see here, um, uh, it tells you if you're trying to do like simple details, right, you might want to choose the moderately complex. If there's a lot of contrast colors um, and there's a, like a black background, uh, you might want to choose like simple. So this is, it's not one of those one thing always works um, for this image I'm gonna use complex for another image I might use simple okay and so um, one trick I will show oh, excuse me one trick that I will um, uh, sh uh, show you is is that if you do use if you do want to want a standard and you want to use one all the time and you don't want to have to figure out which one to use I would stick with using the simple um, if it's the uh, or excuse me I would stick with using the complex um, uh, but again, it's, uh, it depends on what you're doing. Okay. So for default, I would use the complex, but I would use simple for, for more, uh, complex items. Okay. So we're doing the same thing. Let me undo that. So you can see what I did. Okay. So when we uploaded this sunflower, what I'm wanting to do is remove the background. Okay. So the whole point of this, um, area right here is to remove the background because if I was to press continue, that's how it would print. It would print like this, but this is how it would cut. Okay, so this is our print and cut feature on our on our um, Cricut. So anytime we have an image that we want to print out, we can have Cricut cut out for us if we don't want to have the background on it. Okay, because if you wanted to put this, um, say you wanted to put this on a purse, you just want to put the sunflower on the on the purse. Maybe you just want to put the sunflower on the um, on your shirt or on your mask whatever you're going to be um, uh, putting it on okay so with print and cut you can use this for paper you can use this for um, heat uh, heat sheet um, heat transfer sheets that are basically um, printable vinyl that you can use for iron-on materials okay so you can use um, let me show you some examples of, of what I mean by these things so you can um, uh, understand how many things we can do with the print and cut, okay? So let me show you some examples of all the things we can do with print and cut, okay? So let's do this. Here's that one. Print and cut. Let's see what else did we do with print and cut. I did these with print and cut. Hmm. Okay. So I did her with a print and cut, right? So I printed her out on um on some paper, a uh, sticker paper, and then I had um uh, it was full sheet sticker paper and then I had my um, Cricut machine cut it out in a rectangle that was the same size as my container Okay, I also used the print and cut to cut out so I made my own um, uh, Custom dominoes for a friend, but then I didn't end up giving it to her because I was being a perfectionist. I messed up on them um, But I did the print and cut for the Audrey's um, for Audrey's picture. Okay, so that little picture that's encased inside the domino, I actually cut out using the print and cut feature. So that's something you can do with the print and cut. Um, shirts. So this is a combination between the vinyl 
that we uh, the heat transfer vinyl and uh, um, and print and cut okay so um, somebody made this shirt for me um, and they printed out on a heat transfer sheet again it's it's like printable um, heat vinyl you print it out on your printer you send it to your machine just how we've been cutting things out and you've seen how it cuts it cuts around your um, your picture so we um, so no background okay so it really does just cut whatever you want um, this is um, um, the print and cut feature this is one of my adult shirts okay so this is the print and cut feature so I printed this on my um, on my printer I didn't actually need to cut it out with my Cricut but I still um, uh, if you want to uh, print things, you can print things. So I didn't actually cut this on my machine, and that's how I was able to get it bigger like this, okay? So if you want to uh, print things, you don't actually have to use the cut feature. So if you wanted to print something large, this is a shirt that's folded up inside of a package. That's why it looks like this. Um, so this is a shirt. I got it all folded up inside of here. So you can print from any program. You don't necessarily have to print from, from Cricut if you want to print things, okay? So you can print on a heat transfer. So I got this image off of, um, off of one of my Facebook groups, and then I printed it on a heat transfer uh, paper that looks like this. So it looks like paper, and you put it in your printer, okay? So they have dark, and they have light. This is dark, and I know it because it has a blue stripe. The light paper always has red, and this is what it looks like. It just looks like paper, okay? I put this in my printer just like normal paper, and it prints off the image for me. If it's dark paper, we peel it like it's a sticker and put it on, and if it's white, we uh, we put it face down. But um, we'll get there on another video. But I want to show you some things you can do with, with, with printing and cutting. And again, you don't have to print from your machine. Um, from your Cricut um, to, to be able to do things like make shirts, okay? So the majority of the shirts that I make with the print and cut are not uh, made with my Cricut because I want to make large size. And we are limited when we're doing print and cut, and we'll see that. So you can do print and cut on any um, anything that can be put in the printer, any material that can go in the printer. And I'm going to say that again. Any material that can go inside of your printer can be used for print and cut. Because I get asked that all the time. Well, can I use this and I can I use that? And I have to um, uh, just answer the question with, can it go in your printer? Yes, then absolutely it can be used. If it can go in the printer, it can be used for print and cut. And that's the uh, bottom line to that one. Okay, so let's get going. So we don't want it this is how it would cut okay so it's really important to be looking at um, what our cut is going to look like we can look at it by looking at the preview it's all grayed out that means that the machine would cut around this like a rectangle okay when we use our magical Harry Potter wand and we turn we remove the background the goal of removing the background is so uh, the system knows where to cut and let me show you what I mean by that move this light out of our face So what are we gonna do? We're gonna remove the background. We we have our um, wand tool selected and we're going to um, Tap anywhere in the background and do you see how it got removed? I'll do that again for anybody who didn't see Do you see that? Okay, so now the backgrounds removed when I go to press preview do you see the difference okay so now what I see is is that what when I send this to the printer it's going to print off um, it's going to print off my flower and when I send it to my Cricut machine when I send it to the Cricut machine afterwards just like we cut out our cardstock just like we cut out our heat transfer vinyl it is this is the shape that it's going to cut out so what is it gonna do it's gonna cut around our flower for us so we don't have to do that anymore okay so we can print things on cardstock and, and have this cut out and we don't have to do it by hand, okay? So anything that can go in the printer can be used for this and it cuts it for you, okay? The challenge is, and we will see this, is the restriction of size, okay? So again, this is when it's asking us, do we want to choose print and cut or do we want to save this as a cut image? If we save this as a cut image, it would go directly to our machine okay this is for when we're cutting directly to our machine on our mat 
as we have been doing. If we want to send something that we design to our printer first and then have the machine cut it, we are going to click the print then cut image. Okay, we're going to save it as a print and cut because first it's going to print it, then it's going to cut it. If you are not printing anything, you should be saving it as a cut image. Okay, so that should help with the confusion on which one to save it as. You ask yourself what you're doing. Are you printing anything? Yes. Okay, then we should be going to the print and cut. Are we not printing anything? No, I want to print on vinyl. Then you're not printing, go straight to the cut. Okay? So, now that we have our image, let's select it. We know it's selected because it's green. The insert images. And there we go. Okay, and again, we can size it this way. So now it's going up to three, four inches big. I can make it smaller. Okay. How big do we want to make this? I'm thinking we want to make it as big as possible, right? What if we want to make it as big as our paper? My paper is eight and a half by 11. So I'm thinking I should make this eight and a half by 11. I'm going to zoom out so I can see the whole flower. And again, when you zoom out, it doesn't change the size of your, um, project it just changes your zoom so that is 11 inches paper is eight and a half by 11 so I want to make it as big as I can so that's 10.9 inches by 8.2 that's great I want to go to make it but look what it's telling me it's telling me that this project is incompatible it says it's not supported by your current machine selection what does that even mean so I press OK and I don't understand. But something I'm seeing here is it's this yellow triangle, okay? There's like a hazard button. There's a hazard going on, something's wrong. So when I go to, uh, to hover over that and I go to click on it, it says it's not supported. The image is too large, reduce the image to 6.75 by 9.25, okay? So that's what I mean about the size restriction. Um, Cricut can only cut something that's 6.75 by 9.25. It cannot be any bigger than that. So you can print something that's two inches wide, but, but it can't be any longer than 9.25, okay? So those are the maximum restrictions that we have here. So we're gonna have to make this smaller than 9.25 and 6.75, okay? So I got it down to 9.18. 9 Eight, but it's still not um, it's still not gonna let me do it right because it's not less than 6.75 for the height okay so we can again we can manually put in the size that we want by clicking the unlock button up here on our size okay so there's an unlock button it's right up here it looks like a little um, lock a padlock so we're gonna change the width to 9.25 we're gonna change the height to 6.75. 6 6.75. We're gonna press enter. Now that little hazard thing is gone, okay? And I can go to press make it and it says sorting projects. So what does it want me to do? Okay. So that's what it's going to look like when I put it on my mat. It's just showing me that's what my paper is going to look like. It's assuming that I'm going to put it on white paper. You don't have to, but I, I mean, it wouldn't really, it's not really going to take if it's, if it's on, um, if you were to use like a, a, a card stock that wasn't white, it's, it's not really going to print very well on there, right? So I go to print this. I don't need to mirror it. We're not dealing with heat transfer vinyl, so I never have to mirror it when I'm not doing heat transfer. And I went to continue. Now it's going to take me to my cut stage. Okay. So it's asking me to send print image on a printer. So the first step, right? So it breaks it down. Step one, then it'll tell us our material. Then we'll load our mat. Then we'll press go. Number one says print. Let's send a printer. Okay. So let me make sure I have some material in here. I don't want to use my card stock or do I? Yes, I do. I want to use my card stock. So I'm going to print this. I only want one copy. I'm going to leave the bleed on. Uh, the bleed, what the bleed is going to do is um, 
it's going to extend the ink just a little bit outside. So it's gonna make the, the ink bleed a little bit outside of the mark. So when it cuts, if for some reason the machine is cutting off a little bit, it will not pick up any of the white background, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on System Dialog. When I do that, it allows me to, to um, adjust my printer settings. And I like to adjust my printer settings depending on what I'm doing, okay? For our standard setting, I'm gonna show you a standard setting that you can do for, for all your prints. You may not have the same printer preferences or the same settings as I do. If you have an older printer, older computer, um, your printer settings may not look the same, and that's, that's okay. So Cricut's thinking right now, it does this a lot, okay? So when you're in design space, do not be alarmed if it's just kind of stuck or it's, it's doing this. If it doesn't recover or get itself out in 30 seconds or a minute, I would then um, uh, cancel and then redo it, okay? So it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna press this X button because it's, it's not doing what I need it to do. Here's my printer preferences, it finally came up. Okay, so I click on preferences. There's a, there's a little tab here that says preferences for me. And what I do is, is I change it to premium presentation paper mat um, for most projects. Some projects I'll actually change it to something else, but what I'm gonna tell you to do if you don't have those preferences, a good standard setting, a good standard setting is what I find is, is putting it on that bright, um, bright paper, the plain paper, but changing the quality from standard to the highest it'll go. So I have draft, standard, standard, vivid, high, and more settings. I'm gonna click on more settings for mine, and I'm going to change this all the way up to quality. So on the left side it said speed, on the right side it said quality. I want it to go all the way up for quality. I want the highest quality setting, okay? Print preview is on. I'm gonna go on the top here to my tabs. It says um, more options. And what I'm gonna do here is, is I'm going to take my mirror off. I uh, print with a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be mirrored, and so I actually have to go in here and, and check it off, okay? But what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna click on here under color correction. It says automatic and it says custom. I want you to click on custom, go to advanced, and where it says color mode, Okay, so you should be in color management, color controls, and where it says color mode, instead of saying, um, for me it says Epson Vivid, I change this to Adobe. Okay, and then I press OK, I press OK, and then I print. So those are the settings that I uh, would recommend for the highest um, setting. If you have the premium presentation matte selection, choose that. But if you don't have that, then I'm gonna to say to choose the the uh, stand uh, the plain paper, but on the highest quality. You always wanna change highest quality and you wanna take quick print off, okay? So it, there's a quick, uh, print preview. I'm gonna go ahead and print it. So it's printing to my printer. Okay. So there's the printer going. So let that print, and then as soon as that's done printing, we are going to um, iron our mask so we can see how that works. So I just got a white mask prepared for our um, for our design. I have um, a lot of uh, blank masks. I also sew them. You can probably see the sewing machine in the background over there. Um, I sew them uh, custom for folks when they need them. So just waiting for this um, print to come out. I can't remember what I did with my water. I remember putting it away from the machine because I didn't want it to spill on it, but. I don't know what I did with it. Okay. Fine.
That's gonna be a nice sunflower. It's very vibrant. It's actually really vibrant. So. That's a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and get a towel. So trying to use some materials that folks would have. Um, I actually use a heat press for, for everything that I do. Um, I have a, a really nice heat press that I, um, that I adore. And so I uh, would typically use my heat press, but most, most folks have an iron at home. And so I just wanted to show you what we would do um, if we just have an iron and we don't have a heat press. Um, I would pref uh, recommend using a parchment, butcher paper, uh, do not use wax paper, parchment paper, or butcher paper, and you can also use a Teflon sheet, okay? But if, um, if you're just starting out, you may not have those things. Um, so a towel and an iron uh, will work for now, okay? If you have uh, another uh, thinner piece of, uh, of cotton material, that will be fine. So our printer's done. So this is our print. There's our sunflower, okay. And so it printed, it wants us to, um, to set our base material. It's set on iron-on, and we're not doing an iron-on. This is cardstock, so I'm gonna change this back. So it says it's on cardstock now. Perfect. So it's on cardstock, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my mat, take my protective sheet off, but I always keep on. And then I'm going to load it just like it's showing me to do so, okay? So if you hover over it, it will, um, when I say hover, I'm talking about putting your mouse on top of the picture over here. It will show you what it's supposed to look like, okay? It's really important that we want to load our mat and put it in just like that, okay? If I was to put, put it in this way, okay, and put it in upside down, the leaves are on the bottom, not on the top. It would cut it out like this even though it looks like that okay um, if uh, it's sometimes it'll tell you there's a print and cut error which means that it can't read the registration marks registration marks are those black lines that printed around it okay that's how the machine knows where to cut okay this is um, like a CNC machine this machine knows where to cut based on like num numbers and, and uh, um, it's not printing it uh, it's not cutting based on a picture it's cutting based on points that it is remembering through a numeric system, okay? And so when we put this on, we wanna make sure that it's the right way, okay? So let's, let's put this on our mat, making sure that we are within the borders, okay? We're gonna do a nice little smooth down of it, okay? So just smooth it down, smooth it down. You can see how the ink bled a little bit. Let me turn this light over here so we can see. So you can see how the blink, ed, uh, the ink bled a little bit on the edges. You see how it looks a little bit blurry, okay? And that is just for um, a little bit of wiggle room when we're cutting, okay? So that looks just like the picture. Want to make sure to put it on the mat just like the picture when we're doing a print and cut. That's very important, okay? We have our card stock set. We've done that. Now we're on number three. It tells us to load our tools and material. So let's go ahead and load our mat. We've made sure that it's even on both sides. 
it's flush against our rollers. It's not being pressed up against, but or shoved, but right, we're just pressing it. We're gonna press that load button. And then our computer's telling us to press go. Our machine's telling us to press go. Let's press that cricket button. Do you see that little light that came on? So a little light came on. Right now, my, our machine tells us that it's scanning. It tells us that it's scanning. Do you see how it's looking? It's looking for those registration marks right now, okay? Sometimes it's hard for the machine to see the registration marks, and so you may want to dim your lights a bit, okay? So if you're working in a really bright lit room, it might help to, uh, to dim the lights. If you're working on a really glossy material, so now it's cutting, okay? So it's scanned it, it's cutting. So we'll wait for that. But if you're working on a glossy material, sometimes the light will reflect off of it and it's not able to detect the registration mark. So then you're in, you end up with a cut, uh, an error that tells you that it can't read it, okay? In that case, what I would recommend is, is putting some, um, some regular uh, gift wrapping tape or white masking tape and uh, putting some tape down around your border where the registration mark's gonna print. It's a, it's a little hack that you're gonna have to do because it can't read the glossy material, unfortunately, sometimes. So look at that, it's 100% done. We just watched it cut out our whole sunflower for us. Okay, so let's unload our material. Our machine's telling us to do it. Our computer tells us to do it. So the computer talks to the machine and it tells us what to do. So let's unload. Okay. So we'll press finish on our computer because we're done with that. And again, I'm gonna take my mat and I'm going to do a reverse unload, okay? And I'm gonna peel like that, okay? So this is our garbage. And again, remember what it looked like when we looked at our print and our cut. Remember, this is what our cut said it was gonna do. It said it was gonna cut. All of that gray area that we saw was, was our cut line, okay? So it did in fact cut exactly what it said it was. And then we are, here we are. We have our sunflower. And we're gonna use our little spatula just to lift it off. And again, I'm gonna go backwards. There you go. Just to drop it off on the table like that so it doesn't get bent. And there we go, okay? So now we have our print and cut, okay? This is out of cardstock. We could do this with our heat transfer paper that I just showed you. And we could iron it on a shirt, okay? So anything that can go in your printer can be used with your print and cut, okay? We just have to figure out what material it is and we adjust it. You see how we adjust our material? We went from iron on to cardstock, or we went from cardstock, we went to iron on, and then we went back to cardstock. So you can see how we can go from different materials, okay, doing different things. So that's super cute. If it was a little bit smaller, I might put it on there, but that's cute. We'll put it there for now, okay? So we have our, our little vinyl that we cut out. We're gonna make a mask out of that. We have our little card stock that we cut out earlier, okay? And I'll show you guys one, one really cool last thing. I will, I will. Okay, so the iron's heating up. It's already hot, but it's fine. I shouldn't put scissors there. I'll put them back where they belong. Okay. I have all of my um, scissors on hooks too. So. Now that that's done, I want to show you guys one uh, one last thing. I'll show you how to make this mask though, because we've been we've been wanting to do that for for a little while now. So I'm gonna make sure to put this on the right way. Again, I just I put my finger through the little hole and then I match it up with the hole on the other one, and then I just lay it down, and then it goes on right every time, and I put it away. So let's do our mask and then we will do our last little thing, okay? So let's put our tool away. We don't need it, put the tool away. Okay, so just looking for the right side of the mask and this is the right side. So that's the side that'll show. 
Um, sometimes it's hard to do mask, okay? Sometimes it is. It, it can be hard to do mask um, sometimes because they are, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna take these things off. I'm just gonna close this, okay? I'm gonna close this for right now, just so we can have some more room. It just snaps closed, so be very gentle, okay? So just snap it both ways, uh, very gentle. When you're using the Cricut Maker, the Maker does that all by itself, okay? So you don't have to do that. So I'm just gonna power this off for right now just so I can show you guys how to do this thing, okay? So, just gonna put my towel down so I don't um, damage, uh, my desk is already uh, damaged, um, but you would wanna put down, um, you wanna double your layer because you don't wanna burn your, um, burn your surface, okay? So I'm just gonna lay that flat like that and what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna put my um, put my mask down. I found out which side was right, right side up. Some masks are um, they want to curve around uh, a face, and the face is uh, is round, is curved. So masks aren't always flat. So try to make it as flat as you can, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna take my iron and I'm gonna make sure that the steam is off. I want the steam to be off, and I'm just gonna. Press this down for about four or five seconds. What I'm really wanting to do is just, if there's any moisture in my uh, material, I just want to get that out, okay? So I just press that down for about four, four or five seconds. That actually helped it to flatten out a little bit, okay? And then, come here, little baby. Where'd you go? So uh, remember, um, it, it shouldn't be too confusing to know which side to put down, but if you are confused, just remember the plastic backing should be facing you and, your, and the vinyl should be facing your, on your material because using the heat is going to transfer it on there, okay? So let's center it to where it looks pretty, pretty centered, okay? And when it looks pretty centered, I'm gonna just move the straps out the way, but that looks pretty centered right there, okay? And I'm gonna take my towel, okay? And I'm going to, this this image is small, and so I don't have to, I won't have to move my iron. The, the image is small enough to go on the iron. Again, um, I'm trying to uh, use the, the parts that don't have the holes in it so it can have flat, even surface, okay? Um, if I've lived in places where there's no electricity, and so I'm like, look, if you have to take a cast iron pan and do it, it works, because old school irons were, uh, well, they still have them in certain parts of the world. I saw them in, in um, parts of Africa when I was down there. Um, they take hot coals, it's coals, and you put it in the, the it's a cast iron, it's literally a cast iron, and then you, uh, then you iron the clothes like that. Um, so if, if you don't have a heat press, don't you worry. This little iron's gonna be just fine, okay? So I'm just gonna press press down, and I'm actually gonna um, put a little pressure on it, okay? So I'm pressing down. I wanna add pressure, because heat transfer doesn't just, uh, heat transfer vinyl doesn't just need heat to transfer. It needs pressure, okay? And so I'm, um, I'm looking at my, uh, my camera, because that's helping me to, to keep the time. But I'm going to press this down for 45 seconds, 45 to 60 seconds. I'm going to press this down. So I'm already at 30 seconds now, okay? At least. I, I was talking and then I didn't actually do it. Let's check it. So I can see that it's not um, attached all the way. Um, I, I can see it because it doesn't. It's the. It's not. It's not on there all the way. Okay. So my towel might just be too thick for for what I'm trying to do, um, and that might actually be the, the problem. Okay. So if you can find a thinner um, material. So I have these little. Um, they're like little cotton shorts. Really, really, really thin. I'm gonna use that that and see if that works better. Okay. So again, my 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 iron is on the highest temperature. 
It's on the highest temperature. The steam is off. And I'm gonna let this go for 45 seconds. If it's a bigger image, okay, you would want to continuously move your iron around it like I'm doing like this, okay? Again, you wanna provide a little bit of pressure while you're doing that, okay? I recommend getting an actual uh, heat press or an easy press for this, okay? Because um, irons are not, um, uh, res uh, they're not consistent, okay? So I don't actually do these with irons, but I wanna show folks, you know, because sometimes this is all we got, okay? So well, I'm looking at that. It, it's, it looked like it, it did okay. These are hot peels, okay? When you're dealing with heat transfer vinyl, regular heat transfer vinyl, that's not holographic or flock. It's meant to be peeled hot. So I'm gonna hold down my mask right here, holding this, I'm gonna rip it off like a Band-Aid. Now I made sure it was all the way down before I did that, okay? Um, but now when I look, I can see, okay? I would give it a little stretch in both directions, and I would actually go over it for another 20 seconds, okay? Just to make sure that it's sealed in there with the backing off, okay? Because we peeled that backing off, okay? So now I would go back over this, and I would do it for another 20 seconds, okay? If you're using a heat, uh, easy press, I would do it. I, I usually do my iron, my, uh, my iron on 350. Some people say they only do theirs on 305. Some people say they do it on 320. Um, so everybody seems to do theirs on a different one. I personally do mine on 350 degrees on my heat press. On my heat press, I do it for 350. I do 350 degrees Fahrenheit um, for 30 seconds. I peel the the, the uh, backing off, and then I press again for five more seconds. Okay, because what I'm looking for is that I'm looking for. Let me move this. I am looking for my material to be to have a look on it of the material that's behind it. If that makes any sense. Okay, so. It shouldn't look like the vinyl that was on um, the, the backing. It should have the texture of the material that I'm putting on underneath it. And I should be able to see it, okay? So my vinyl shouldn't look like super smooth and glossy. And it still kind of does to me. Um, I, I probably, I mean, again, I don't, um, I don't use irons to do it. But what I see is, is that things will come up in the washing machine. Look at this. You see that right there, this little corner? So there's a little corner right here that's kind of peeling, and I can kind of see it. Now, it probably isn't that big of a deal right now, but in the wash, it's going to come up, okay? So you want to make sure that you can see the material behind it. You can see the texture of your material um, imprinted in the vinyl. And if you can't see it, you need to go back to the heat board, okay? So... I would go back and I would heat it for maybe another 20 seconds just to make sure that that's going to go on because what you don't do not want is for people to um, if you are making things for people your uh, people in your house even your friends they may understand they're like okay you know they're 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 learning and and they're just thankful that you made them something but if you are making something and selling it to someone and that's your client okay it's not a um it's never okay to sell a client something that's not going to last okay um i wash my shirts normally i uh put them in the washing machine normal i do not put them inside out i do not hang them to dry and my shirts are fine after months of washing and wearing okay and so um clients don't want to have to uh, wash their clothes inside out or on any kind of special directions if they did then they would wear nice clothes you know, but most people don't want to take the time to have to, uh, to you know, turn an, a garment inside out, wash it on cold, and then hang to dry. What I have found in my experience working with uh, clients is, is that they just don't want to do all that. It's too much for them. And so, 
to make it easier for them, I have uh, tried to uh, make shirts that will last forever. And it's not like a, a homemade type of thing. It's made like it would be made in a factory. And like I said, the, the settings that I have found are 350 degrees for 30 seconds. Take the backing off and press again for five to seven seconds. If I'm dealing with holographic, I crank the heat up to 375. If I'm dealing with a reflective uh, vinyl, I'll turn the material down to three uh, to like 315. Um, that's pretty much my settings. When I'm dealing with a heat transfer, 330 to 350 is my uh, Fahrenheit temperature. I do the same thing with heat transfer, 30 seconds, five seconds um, after I peel the backing off. Um, when I'm doing heat transfer, I always uh, do it with Teflon. I use Teflon um, or butcher paper. And uh, that's all I use. Um, I use parchment paper and Teflon uh, to press. Okay, so there we have it. We have that. We were able to get our uh, our cut. Okay, and we did our print and cut. Okay, so we printed this out on our cardstock, and then we had the Cricut machine cut it out. Look how perfect it came out. Okay, so we could put this on on something. Okay, we could put that on something. We could even put that right there, okay? We could put that right on top of it, okay? And start building a little mandala or something like that. I don't know. It fits. Whatever. So, there's our mask, okay? So now we have a cool little mask we can wear. Yay! So, we have a cute little sunflower mask. We have a sunflower cutout. And we have um, our cardstock. We opened up our machine. Yeah! I've been waiting to open that machine. And it's purple okay so I think my next task for this one will be to um, to design it I want to design this and so I'm gonna put a skin on it it's um, purple um, it reminds me of like lavender and cream I want to do something that is uh, really soft and um, I'm thinking like a lace so I might do a nice lace mandala um, and do something real nice on there so we'll do that um, next um, I can show you how to do the draw um, on it, but the designing for the draw is, um, is a whole nother uh, tutorial on its own, and I've already made a tutorial on how to use the draw feature on this, okay? But I wanted to show you how to get started because the, um, not saying that the draw is not important, but most people's questions um, have to do with cut and print and cut. And I really wanted to just get started um, today. I showed you how you can use, um, how you can insert um, the, the pin inside, but um, you can um, see the video. I will uh, upload it. Um, if, you, if you haven't uh, been able to find it, I'll upload it and make sure that you can see the video on how to use the draw um, feature on Cricut. Um, with I, I use the infusible markers you don't have to um, like I said they have adapter tools for it um, and you can uh, fit uh, sharpies and other things inside of it as is so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this machine okay you always want to unplug your Cricut machine when it's not in use um, there have been uh, reports of Cricut makers and Cricut machines um, like catching on fire and so you just want to um, unplug it also when it is um, plugged in um, when your Cricut machine is plugged in it's all it always has power continuously running through it continuously running through it okay so always unplug it and put it um, put it away okay so there you have it we opened up our machine did a cut we did a print and cut we even made a mask okay so that's all the things that um, uh, to get started with and then um, you can move on to starting to explore your materials. But now you understand how to do a basic cut and a print and cut and how we can take an image from Google or Facebook and what we call clean it up by removing the background, right? And so make sure to check out all of my other videos. Um, they're very informative and they're also a lot shorter, okay? So this video is two and a half hours long and, and the reason that it's so long is because we're going from start to finish and we were covering um, three different projects, okay? I wanted to show you the mask. I wanted to show you this print and cut sunflower. There's the mask. There's our print and cut sunflower. And I wanted to show you, um, well, this was the design that we chose um, 
when we decided to do our cut. But anywho, uh, want to show you guys all of that. Okay. So now we can see how we can do things with different materials. Okay. There we have it.